spread. Everyone can tell stories. Scientists have spent decades drilling deep into the Earth's core on a secluded peninsula in northwest Russia. Their borehole is the deepest man has ever gone at over 40,000 feet. Humans, unsurprisingly, are captivated by what lies under the Earth's surface. Some people believe that our knowledge of space has surpassed our knowledge of what exists beneath the Earth's surface. While many people are familiar with the Cold War era space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, few are aware of the equally fascinating effort to conquer our underground world. U.S. and Soviet Union rivalry to penetrate the Earth's surface. In the late 1950s, rival U.S. and Soviet scientists' teams began planning elaborate tests to penetrate the Earth's crust. This hard shell, which stretches as far as 30 miles into the center of our planet, finally gives way to the mantle, a mysterious inner layer that accounts for 40% of our planet's mass. The United States then took the lead in 1958 with the start of Project Mohol. The operation, which took place near Guadalupe, Mexico, saw a team of engineers drill through the Pacific Ocean's bed to a depth of over 600 feet. However, their funding was cut eight years later and Project Mohol was abandoned. Then, it was the turn of the Soviets. Researchers began drilling beneath the Pachensky district, a sparsely populated region on Russia's Kola Peninsula, on May 24, 1970. Their mission was to travel as deep as possible into the planet's crust. Furthermore, the Soviets planned to drill to a depth of 49,000 feet below the Earth's surface. Researchers began digging a sequence of boreholes, branching off from a single main hollow with specialized equipment. On the other hand, prospectors in America had made some progress while they were slowly making their way down. The Lone Star Producing Company began drilling for oil in Washita County, Oklahoma, in 1974. In the process, the company built the Bertha Rogers Hole, a man-made wonder that stretches over six miles into the Earth's surface. Although Lone Star did not find what it was hunting for, its effort resulted in the planet's deepest hole remaining for another five years. Then, on June 6, 1979, SG-3, one of the Kola boreholes, broke the record. By 1983, the nine-inch wide hole had sunk 39,000 feet into the Earth's crust. Research efforts Researchers on the Kola Peninsula momentarily put down their instruments after reaching this milestone. They delayed work on the borehole for a year so that visitors could see the intriguing location. However, when the experiment was continued the next year, drilling was halted due to a technical issue. Not to be outdone, the researchers dumped the previous borehole and started over at a depth of 23,000 feet. By 1989, the drilling had reached a new high of 40,230 feet, or 7.5 miles. Those participating in the project were encouraged, and they were optimistic about the future, expecting the hole would reach 44,000 feet by late 1,990. Even more astonishing, the borehole was expected to reach its target depth of 49,000 feet as early as 1,993. But beneath the desolate Russian tundra, something unexpected awaited. And strangely, as the drill got closer and closer to the Earth's core, something strange happened. For the first 10,000 feet, temperatures inside the borehole were mostly consistent with what the researchers had predicted. However, after that depth, the temperature rose at a significantly higher rate. And by the time the drilling got close to its goal, the hole had heated up to 180 C, 356 F, which was 80 C, 176 F, hotter than expected. The researchers also discovered 
that the rock at these depths was significantly less thick than previously thought. As a result, it reacted strangely and unpredictably to the greater temperatures. As a result, the COLA team abandoned the project, recognizing that their equipment would not last in these conditions. It was 1,992 at the time, 20 years after drilling had begun. Before sealing up what has been nicknamed the Kola Super Deep Borehole, researchers discovered several surprising facts. They uncovered small fossils of marine plants, for example, at a depth of four miles. Given how long they had been trapped beneath several miles of granite, which was supposed to be nearly two billion years old, these relics were amazingly undamaged. The discovery. However, an even more remarkable discovery was uncovered at the deepest regions of the Kola Superdeep Borehole. By analyzing seismic waves, experts had previously anticipated that the rock beneath our feet transforms from granite to basalt at a depth of two to four miles beneath the surface. But, at least on the Kola Peninsula, they quickly discovered that this was not the case. Instead, even at the borehole's deepest point, researchers discovered only granite. They eventually came to the conclusion that the change in seismic waves was due to metamorphic variations in the rock, not a transition to basalt. But that wasn't the end of it. They also discovered running water several miles beneath the Earth's surface, at depths no one expected to see it. While some critics have interpreted the discovery of subterranean water as confirmation of biblical floods, scientists believe that the occurrence is the consequence of tremendous pressure driving oxygen and hydrogen atoms out of the rock. Following that, impermeable rocks trapped the freshly produced water beneath the surface. The collapse of the Soviet Union coincided with the shutdown of the Kola Superdeep borehole, and the project was permanently shut down by 1995. The site is now classified as an environmental hazard, while some artifacts from the experiment can still be seen in the nearby town of Zapoljarni, about six miles away. Researchers have failed to break the borehole's record, indicating that it is still the planet's deepest man-made point. The race to the Earth's center, however, is far from ended. Drilling platforms from the International Ocean Discovery Program continue to dive deep beneath the seafloor, facing failing equipment and harsh temperatures to learn what surprises lie beneath the surface. However, not every journey beneath the waves in search of the Earth's center is successful. A two-man submersible, for example, was dropped into the cold waters of the Antarctic on a mission of discovery in a literal plunge into the unknown. What is the goal of the crew members? To dive further beneath the seas near the South Pole than any other expedition in human history. And what they found down there is a breathtaking look into a world that no one has ever seen before. This was not, however, a spur of the moment decision. It took two years of rigorous planning to find the ideal time and location for the historic dive. And there's a compelling rationale for it. We know more about the other planets in our solar system than we do about the ocean floor of the Earth. Indeed, we've succeeded in mapping the surfaces of Mars in better detail than the sea floors that surround us. The average distance between Mars and Earth is 140 million miles, to put that into perspective. The average depth of the ocean, on the other hand, is a little over 12,000 feet, or almost two miles. But if that makes it sound like diving beneath the Antarctic ice is simple, you're mistaken. To begin, scientists had to determine the optimal location for their descent. However, they eventually settled on a place known as Iceberg Alley, and the moniker wasn't given to the region without reason. Near one of the Antarctic peninsula's northernmost extremities, the alley forms a channel. It's a stretch of sea surrounded by moving ice chunks, some the size of a car and others covering half a square mile. So merely transporting the submersible carrying boat to the proper location was a big issue. 
a documentary was made on the crew's quest to set sail into the unknown. And there were some bumps along the road, according to executive producer James Honeyborn, who told the BBC that getting through Iceberg Alley was like a giant game of space invaders. It wasn't simply getting to the right spot that caused the team difficulty. Other factors at play complicated the job. The team wasn't sure how the submarines they planned to utilize would fare in the deep ocean. However, as they began their 3,000-foot drop, those concerns may have evaporated. Why? They discovered a fascinating ecosystem of odd organisms beneath the waves, including one they named after a prominent character from the Star Wars film trilogy. While life is cold and cruel above the Antarctic seas, there are abundant, strange, even alien, aquatic animals beneath them. However, there are several fantastic reasons behind this. Marine snow and its importance. Marine snow is basically organic stuff that flows from the top of the ocean to the bottom. It transports nutrients and energy from regions of the sea that receive sunlight to portions of the ocean that don't, making it a vital source of sustenance for deep sea organisms. However, krill poo is an important food source in the deep seas beneath the Antarctic. Krill are little crustaceans that reside in the oceans of our world and serve a significant function. Their waste, in particular, transforms the seafloor into a muddy habitat ideal for life. And, as it turns out, the life that thrives in that location is some of the most bizarre you'll ever see. The Antarctic Sun Star, given a more sinister name by the researchers, is one of the more odd animals discovered by the crew. The beast was dubbed a Death Star, and rightly so. The creature, whose Latin name is Libidiaster annulatus, is a relative of the ordinary starfish, yet it's a completely different creature. For starters, the Death Star can have up to 50 arms and grow to be larger than a hubcap. Small pincers cover the skin on its arms, and if anything touches them, they snap shut. Almost always, the unfortunate victim is a passing krill. And there's another peculiar thing about this sun star. The Death Star is a perfect example of how different Antarctica is from the rest of the world's oceans, where fish are the major predators. Few fish can survive in the water near the South Pole because it is so cold. Invertebrates, like the Antarctic sun star, are at the top of the food chain as a result. Furthermore, diving in the Antarctic is akin to peeking through a window into what life was like in the seas long before humans inhabited the Earth. 